Hey guys, today we are going to look at 10 cards and from this point on I will take MTG Finance more seriously because I'm opening a I'm opening a card shop. Now the card shop will be digital first, mtgline.com, which I have to edit. It's pretty whatever right now. There's no content, it's just filler data. This is like Latin because there's I have to fill in the stuff. It's gonna probably take me Christmas and Thanksgiving. Uh, that's the only two holidays that I ever get a break to work on it and get the website up. I want the website up before the store, but in doing so, I need to make financial choices as to what I wanna buy, what I wanna stock. And I am pretty much gonna stock on my reserve list or cards like these 10. And the reason being is I don't have the I don't have the patience and I don't know if I can hire someone uh, who can do this. Again, I'll go into Marketplace, see if someone exists who is a Magic Gathering player who wants to sort cards all day. I would rather have my company be about speculation. So us buying low uh, products or collections, having a storefront means that you can buy collections easier and that's good but I also want to buy stuff. So having a storefront means you have a lot more buying power and I have and will find some investors from my LinkedIn. Said investors will put in money. Not, contracts have not been signed. We have to negotiate price points, uh, cap tables, things of that nature. Because I mean, I found an investor, I found actually two of them and it's better to use other people's money uh, that's how I started my marketing agency was I found two investors and now we're neutral, which is really, really good considering that we're only two years old and we're a team of seven, eight people. If you count our freelancers, we're like actually 12 um, people at an office. So here's what I'm going to invest in. I want cards that are old. I want cards that are on a reserve list. I want cards that I just love. Uh, and I feel like I can commission for them to be altered and then sold. What you might not know is I also own a photography slash art studio, and that one is not profitable yet, but it's only been 180, no less. It's only been 90 days. It's called BitGale. And that went from teaching people how to develop code, which was profitable, but we sh shifted it to our main website. So, yeah, I found investors. I'm going to buy these cards, the full art ones. Essentially, the the way I look at it is going to be very different from most stores. I'm going to rely heavily on my online. I'm not going to rely on foot traffic. I'm not going to probably do f and I'm not going to ask Wizard of the Coast to sell me a box of $78 because you can buy them on Amazon right now for $75 shipped. You can buy a box of Kaladas. No, hold on. A for Revolt on Amazon Prime for $75 shipped, and I don't see that ever changing. Uh, Wizard of Coast does not like local stores, uh, to the point that Wizard of Coast used to have local stores, they do not have them anymore. The price point on these boxes, you buy them at 78, go on Dave and Adams, you can get, I got a RTR box for 70. That's not a bad box. The stuff in it is very good. You got Fetchland, or not Fetchlands, Shocklands, you got Death Rite Shamans, Abrupt Decays, Vraska has been moving up a little bit. Jace AOT is not too bad. But you have a lot of amazingly strong cards in RTR, including, you know, just the five Shocklands, right? It's $70 a box and David Adams shipped and they give you free stuff. I mean, why would I buy it from Wizard of Coast at 78 when I can get it for 70 many years later? And actually, I, I like it at 70. I don't like it at 78. 78 is not a good price point anymore. I actually was buying a ton of them at 80 from my local game store. And then my local game store was like, of Gatecrash. Gatecrash is consistently under $70 on David Adams. And Amazon is... I'll put it this way. It's very scary to see a box on $75 on Amazon because that hits all the casual players. It's cheaper. It's Amazon Prime. It's just better. Uh, better customer service. The best customer service, in my opinion. If I had the choice of ordering a card from Amazon, same price, or a TCG player, 
Amazon all, all the way. They're not like a random store. It's a big corporation and they will refund you your money, no question to ask. They'll just be like, okay, done. Don't worry about it. So that's what I would be scared of. I am not interested. I'm interested in having some capital, figuring out their... Okay, so what I do, a lot of you probably don't know. I make websites, but I also make apps. I use make apps using something called Big... I make apps on something called Big Data, which takes gigabyte like what's bigger than a ter terabytes uh terabytes something like that anyway of data and then crunches it down and makes a predictive algorithm so what i do is google analytics google adwords i predict certain behavior in the automobile sectors as to what type of person is going to buy a subaru and you know the subaru advertisement with the puppy or the dog is recent and i can tell you that's using big data, they found Subaru owners are most likely dog owners, and therefore it makes sense to brand it as, okay, take your dog on a vacation with you. And to have a dog as essentially the mascot, which it wouldn't make sense for a lot of other brands to do that because they don't have that many dog owners. Falia is the prime example of something that if I had investor money, I would own a thousand, like I could see, if it was $2 though, I could see me spending $20,000 to buy 10,000 of these and just sitting on them. And that's what I would have done had I had investor money, but unfortunately I did not. So I only bought a, hun a few hundred copies. But I knew it, like everything about what I knew about Magic, it was, this was a card. It was uh, accumulation of the perfect card. And should it survive reprint, which I also kind of predicted it would, due to the fact it's a legendary creature, it's actually not that fun to play against in draft, uh, because you know people like playing spells, so it's kind of like a counter spell almost mechanic. And at the most important part here, and this is why Liliana Last Hope, I have, assuming she doesn't get reprint, so I'm less positive since she's a planeswalker. I'm a reprint will tank her heavily. But maybe that would be good because then you can buy in at a lower price point. But Lily, Lana of the Last Hope, she is Falia to me. Just at a much higher price point. It's more pay to play, right? And I might do it. Um, so I'm in talks. You probably are sick and tired of me saying this about my LinkedIn. But I get investment offers all the time from my LinkedIn. My most recent po post as of today, which is many days I mean, it's probably at six or seven million, but as of today, it's at $5 million. Not uh, 5 million views, 5,000 plus, and that's very typical. I would say two of my posts go viral. I've been on radio stations. I've been on Inc. Magazine. And I have found a bunch of investors. And actually, I have two investors who I meet and I can ask for more money if I need it, but which I don't because we're profitable now. But if I need it to, I guess we could get more money. So that is what my magic store is. It's going to be based on big data. It's going to be based on holding cards and buying them and mostly reserve list cards. I'm not going to lie. And using investor money to see what happens and then selling them in the Magic the Gathering store. So my store, my MTG Lion store is not going to have 10,000 cards or 1,000 cards. It's only going to get 100 cards. It'll be Falia, Malera, Intuition, these um, player base rewards, FNM promos, maybe more than 100. But at most, probably has like 250 cards because that's the inventory I want to stock. But instead of having one or two of them, it'll have like a few hundred, I feel. Anyway, that is my new store model. I based it because the video today, uh, I'm going to upload later i feel like this one's coming up first friday so i'm recording this video monday and my second video will talk about why i'm very afraid of the current card model for stores there is a store called mtg card market it was owned by noah wilson who owns immortals r.i.p immortals so i follow this store a lot because of noah uh, Noah is the CEO of a League of Legends team, and there's CSGO, Overwatch, like it's an esports team. And I, I actually have talked to Noah on LinkedIn, 
and he seems like a pretty cool guy. He's you know, 22 now, 20, like he's not that old. Seems like, uh, you know, and before he did that, the reason that the investors liked him was because he did big data and analytics. And he also ran MTG car market for a little bit, or he had part ownership. So yeah, I think, and that store recently failed and there's only like a few stores in Chicago. So there's no reason for it to fail. In Houston, maybe you have like, if I had to predict, I would say 10 to 15 stores. In Chicago, they had two stores, right? They're those two stores, and then maybe Pastimes up north, which is like a shitty store. Uh, or I don't know if it's, I, I know it's a very bad tournament organizer. And I know had they not been so bad, Channel Fireball would not be a monopoly, would not have a monopoly over it. But they were really bad. Bobble, yeah, I would buy a ton of bobbles into hold and assuming it's not reprinted. So it's all about risk assessment, right? And I have algorithms that can help me and I do that. That's what I do on a daily basis is I have my developers create algorithms for me to predict patients and for me to predict car buyers and me to predict all these things. So we actually applied the algorithm to some card prices uh, and card graphs. All you actually need is a graph. You just need trend, you need price history, you need price, uh, you need card supply, card demand, and you need to know a little bit about magic and then you just throw in the formula and out it tells you folly or folly. And also, you know, I'm trying to classify, I would say what, how I can identify these things. Um, I have a, so it makes no sense for me to brag about it because I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and I'm going to actually test it. I'm gonna get some investor money, which is for me, uh, did, there's like a line of investors who are always trying to invest in random stuff. When I started Big Gale, which is photography, videography, I wanted to own 100% of it, but then all these people want to come in and like own it. And I was like, uh, okay, well, I guess we can hire some more people. So Big Gale, and that was just my interest. I wanted to do photography at the time and videography. And I was like, oh, cool. And we have some clients. We have some commercial lease clients that are horrendous. I shouldn't say horrendous. They're very difficult real estate agents and whatnot. Okay, anyway, that's it. So these are the 10 cards that I would, that have gone up recently in price. And I think they all have merits where I can understand why I would want them. Uh, how am I going to obtain these cards? I'm actually going to obtain them the same way that Rudy does, which is I asked you guys, if you have any of them, I give you better than buy list. So maybe, I don't know what Rudy offers. I think his prices are reasonable, but I'm going to offer whatever it takes to get the card and I'll buy them for you at higher than what you could get otherwise online. So I'm going to accumulate the cards via online, via my website. So I'm going to say, okay, this is a buy list of Falia. I want to buy Falia at $8. I don't know. Let's assume her buy list is six at Star City. I'll offer eight, nine, maybe even 10. And then I buy all the Falias because I have the highest buy list and then I store them and I don't resell them until later which is a different model from every other card sh shop, which is only trying to do volume. But I look at these other card shops and they look amazing. Like card market, IMTG card market look amazing. I do not know how I went out of business. I, it's in a very big city. It's in Chicago. It's one of two and a half stores. If you call pastimes a half store, because it's not really in Chicago and it went out of business. So, that is a little scary. I think everything is moving digital. All the YouTubers are promoting digital. And I feel like uh, you got to go digital. And luckily, I know how to make websites. I can make a more, I can make a website better than MTG Car Market. I'm 100% I'm certain of that. I just need to get working on it and do it. <laughs> anyway, bye guys.